Good Sunday morning. Boy, our democracy and our politics, they feel like we're at a breaking point. We have rising political violence fueled by election denialism, economic brinksmanship in Congress, a Supreme Court, relationships between the justices so strained after an unprecedented leak, they've yet to issue an opinion this term. And trust in the court from the public never been lower. And this morning, we're waking up to reports of another mass shooting with at least 10 dead at a Lunar New Year event in Monterey Park, California. Details are still coming in. No need to jump to conclusions, but let's be honest. These events do not exactly bring comfort to our current political system. We don't handle these well or solve these problems. And if all of this wasn't enough, adding to this instability, we have both the current and former presidents under investigation. And on Saturday night, the White House revealed more classified information was found at Biden's Wilmington home after what was a remarkable 13-hour FBI-led search on Friday of the home of a sitting president. It wasn't a subpoena. It was a cooperative search. It was done with the president's legal team acknowledging it. They said they offered to provide prompt access to his home and that six more items with classified markings were indeed found, including documents from Biden's time as a senator as well as vice president. And this FBI search comes just days after Biden said he had no regrets about how he's handled this uh, issue of classified documents and how he's talked to the public about it. But it's likely to prompt more comparisons between the current and former presidents. Though, of course, Mr. Trump and his advisors are also being investigated for obstructing their probe. Then we have the issue of election denialism. That's been fueled by Donald Trump. And sadly, it appears it's given some of his supporters a permission slip to commit political violence. The case in New Mexico this week is just the latest in a string of violent incidents rooted in election denialism from the assault on Brazil's capital by supporters of the former president there, where Trump allies actually helped sow doubts about those election results. We had the attack on Paul Pelosi just days before the midterm elections as well. And then finally, we have this manufactured crisis here in Washington, this escalating rhetoric over the debt limit. It's a reminder of just how fractured right now the Republican Party is because it's Republicans uh, wanting to have this fight and attempt to rebrand themselves as the party of fiscal discipline, if you will, after they all oversaw an explosive rise in the national debt under President Donald Trump. So Republicans are trying to use this debate to try to unify them around an issue, cutting spending. Democrats, of course, now see an opportunity to paint House Republicans as extremists. The reality is, of course, at the end of the day, this debt limit is going to get raised. We just don't know how it gets done. Even Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell concedes this point. America must never default on its debt. It never has and never will. Should we be concerned about a financial crisis? No, I would not be concerned about a financial crisis. 